Hi, my name is Tom de Jong. I'm from the University of Twente in the Netherlands. In this video, I'd like to take you on a short tour uh, through the history of the Golab ecosystem, the development of, those, of that, um, how we came to this uh, initiative and where we currently stand. Um, to start with, one of the reasons for um, starting our activities on Golab was the realization that we need engaging science and engineering instruction. This was inspired by a number of policy documents, both from the US and, and from Europe, but also by many results from um, educational studies that show that engaged learning, meaning that students are really involved in the domain, leads to higher motivation and to better, deep, better and deeper uh, conceptual knowledge by students. And we have chosen for a specific form of engaged learning, namely inquiry learning. And in inquiry learning, students gain knowledge by answering research questions. So they start with a question that takes them and that they want to answer. And they do so by performing investigations and uh, to analyze the data that come, of those in, come out of those investigations. So basically, students learn more or less as scientists. And this was the starting point for the uh, GoLab initiative. Um, if you go into inquiry learning, if you go as a learner, as a scientist, there's a number of important things. One, you need a means to do your investigations. And there, the role of technology came into our project. You can do so by traditional laboratories, but we were very stimulated and uh, challenged by using technology for that. And in a Dutch television program that is called College Tour, they do invite celebrities from all around the world and they are interrogated by students and these students can ask any question they want to ask to that uh, to that person who is invited and one of the invitees at some point was uh, Bill Gates and they asked Bill Gates one of the students stood up and he asked Bill Gates if you look back in your life where do you think that technology could have more influence than it currently has and then Bill Gates took up that question. He said, that's an interesting question because I discussed the same question when I spoke to Steve Jobs uh, when he was um, in his final days and we discussed the same question. And we both came to the conclusion that we have had influence on many domains except for education. Well, we fell short in terms of the computer uh, changing the education. We both felt like we could have done better there. And if we look at technology in the classroom, as it currently is, that proves that Bill uh, Gates was, was correct in this respect. Because if we look at the most popular applications in the classroom currently, we see that these are mainly drill and practice programs, like sp on spelling and arithmetic, learning management systems that help you um, organize your teaching, whiteboards, electronic whiteboards, that basically replace the blackboard, MOOCs, in which persons, like they do in the classroom, explain to students uh, the domain, and online adaptive testing. And all of these replace one-on-one -on -one traditional methods. So basically, it's old wine in new bottles. There is, however, a technology that can help us reach beyond this old wine in new bottles. And these are online laboratories. And of course, we know laboratories in the classroom or let's say in the school, in your practicals for a long time. But online labs can add something uh, new to that. Here you see one example that is very close to something that you can do in the classroom. It's a simple simulation, a simple lab on buoyancy in which students can change um, the fluids in the tubes. They can change the material of the ball and the size of the ball. And they can see, they can experiment and see if the ball floats, drifts or sinks. This is something you can do easily in the classroom. But if we look at the next example, which is an osmosa power plant designed by our colleagues in Duisburg and uh, of the University of Duisburg Essen, uh, in which they made a lab from an osmosa power plant, which makes um, energy from the difference between fresh and salt water. Um, the original plant is located in Norway. Students can pick up the plant put it on different places in the world, change parameters in the plant, and see how that affects the energy production. Well, this clearly offers new possibilities that never can be done in the class in real. 
Another thing that you can do with online laboratories is that you can easily and more dedicated combine that with online support for an inquiry process. And um, students need that support in order to get into an effective learning process. And you can do that on an individual basis, which you cannot do in a real laboratory. And also compared to real laboratories, um, virtual ones uh, or um, uh, remote ones, they can be safer. For example, if you work with radioactive material, uh, it's safer to do that virtual than real. They enable faster experimentation for your students. They can be cheaper and they can offer an augmented view. So you can, in the virtual laboratory, for example, include beams of light or angles and whatever that you cannot see in the real laboratory. Of course, real laboratories also have advantages, but these are a few advantages of virtual labs to compare to real labs. Now, if we move to the Golab ecosystem, because these were our starting points, um, what we have designed is the, uh, the main entrance for you is what we call Golabs, and you find it on www.golabs.eu. What you find there is more than 600 online laboratories, virtual remote data sets for you to choose from. And they come from all, of, all over the world. And we are very grateful to our colleagues from all over the world that they were willing to share their laboratories on Golabs. You find more than 40 apps or scaffolds, as we call them, that help, can help students in their inquiry process. For example, apps that help students to design hypotheses, create experiments, write down their conclusions, or um, set up questions. So that is what we uh, offer to students. Um, we have close to 1,000 inquiry learning spaces on Golabs. These are full learning experiences for students in which teachers have combined online laboratories, scaffolds, but also all kinds of multimedia material. Uh, and they share these inquiry learning spaces. There are many more created than the 1,000 that we have published. Uh, but these, the published ones are there for, to share them with other teachers and to, uh, for other teachers to be able to copy them and adapt them and use them in their own classroom. To create those inquiry learning spaces, Golab offers you uh, an authoring uh, and an authoring and learning platform. And that is called GRASP, and you can find it on grasp.eu, in which you can combine apps, labs, multimedia material, and put it into an inquiry cycle. And it's all configurable by you as a teacher. These are the main components of Golab, and you can find them all on www.golabs.eu. Now, looking at the history of Golab, how did we create this all? We started um, in November 2012 with the Golab project sponsored by the EU under the uh, FP7 framework program. And we progressed through the, uh, uh, through the um, years, going through a number of reviews. And we started with, when we started, we had no integrated system. We all had all kinds of bits and pieces, labs, small apps from different projects in different technologies. Then we started to make mock-ups of our Golab ecosystem. And here you see a mock-up of the inquiry learning spaces that students uh, uh, follow. And much of what we've done in the mock-up is still available in the, um, uh, in the ILSs, in the inquiry learning spaces. Students see them today. And here you see one of the first two interfaces of, the, uh, of an ILS um, uh, on top here in the light blue and the authoring and learning uh, platform as you see it there, the GRASS platform as you see it there at the bottom right. Then um, in December 2016, Colab finished. And we had an interface for Colabs as you see there on top and a very new interface for the authoring learning environment the GRASP environment. In June 2018, when uh, we had the first NextLab review and NextLab started right after Golab finished, we had uh, a new interface for Golabs that you currently see today as well. And now, May 2019, at the moment of the video recording, we will publish a new view for inquiry learning spaces soon and the number of apps has increased uh, dramatically. There are now many more apps than we had at the start. Um, the impact of Golab can be characterized in a number of lines. 
When we started the project, I remember that we promised the EU to have 45 online labs, uh, on Go Labs. At that moment, that seemed like an almost impossible number to reach. Today, uh, we have more than 600 online laboratories offering, I think, the most extensive um, set of labs online in one portal. And we're very grateful to our colleagues from all around the world that they were willing to share their labs with us on GoLabs. More or close, I should say, close to 1,000 ILSs have been published on GoLabs. And these are ILSs created by teachers, published there to offer them to other teachers in the world to um, share them and also for other teachers to reuse, adapt them and use them in their own class. We have around 18,000 sessions per month at GoLabs at the moment, and our users come from all around the world. At the GRASP Authoring and Learning Platform, we have more than 31,000 registrations at the moment. So people who really registered and were willing to create ILSs. And we see that thousands and thousands of ILSs have been created. Of these ILSs, and of course this is progressing in time, and we see this, this, this increasingly being done uh, over the years, 1,880 ILSs were created that we see were used in the classroom. According to our estimation, if we see the number of students using it, we think that 1,880 ILSs were used in the classroom, involving close to 90,000 students worldwide. <coughs> when we started project, the, the GOLAB project, leading to the GOLAB initiative, which is the set of all the projects that bring together GOLAB, that are centered around GOLAB, we didn't start from scratch. Uh, we started from scratch in the sense that there was no goal lab, but there were many preceding projects. And here you see a number of, them, of those mentioned. For example, the Sky project uh, sponsored by the EU and FP7, the Role project that was of great influence of what we currently have in goal lab, goal lab with a C, which was on collaborative learning, and even before that, the SimQuest uh, uh, authoring environment. Currently, uh, we do have, or in fact, the GoLab project itself has finished. That was the uh, starting point for um, the GoLab ecosystem as we currently have it. As a follow-up, we are in the final year of the Next Lab project. And we also have a project uh, sponsored by the EU in, in H2020, which is called GoGa, GoLab Goes Africa, in which the GoLab ecosystem is introduced in a number of African countries. In the meanwhile, we have a number of related projects. Uh, one on 21st century skills for technical education, one on for teachers on uh, teaching ICT within Korea and Lithuania, one to introduce um, um, uh, the GOLAB ecosystem in Taiwan, and a very recent one that focuses on creating online laboratories for quantum physics and helping students with inquiry learning spaces to learn the difficult topic of quantum physics. And there are a number of more, but these are the main ones currently running. You may ask, what is the future of GoLab? And uh, we are working very hard to make GoLab sustainable. And we'll do that by acquiring or submitting new projects and hopefully acquiring them. Uh, we'll work together with commercial lab providers that offer their labs then through GoLabs so that you can use. And of course, there's a price dedicated to uh, using commercial labs. And we'll introduce a premium membership for schools, including courses, including support for introducing GoLab in your school. However, the GoLab, the main GoLab system, will stay there for free for you to use as it currently is. If you want to have information about these different initiatives, please contact us at info at